Hey guys, welcome to another episode from Stacy. Here We Grow Again. So we haven't figured out my camera yet, guys, but I wanted to show you this soil I picked up yesterday. So I'm recording with my phone for now. I know it might not be perfect, but at least I'm showing you guys something from my garden. <laughs> I just want to show you that I am getting ready a bunch of containers today. I'm putting soil in my raised garden beds. Even if they're not raised, you can still buy a mix like this. Now, I found this for the same price as my jungle growth. I have a video on my jungle growth and coca loco soil I use, and I've been trying to find like a cheaper soil to top my beds off with, besides my compost that I make homemade. You know, sometimes when it's not ready, you need other things to top off your garden beds with. So this slowly releases nutrients, um, grows big, beautiful plants, lots and lots of tons in rich in organic matter. So this is an organic product. 100% organic. It contains no synthetic additives, no anything. You know, it's just really low in nitrogen. This soil, I felt it through the bag and it felt pretty good. It felt like my jungle growth. And this is it, guys. It's really chunky like my jungle growth. It has a lot of organic matter in it. It seems really sandy. It's got a lot of peat moss in it, dolomite lime, um, a bunch of other stuff in it that's pretty good for your plants. So, I wanted to show you that we're going to top our beds off with this and we're also going to use it in our containers. So the way I use like a garden, you now for for like garden soil or raised bed soil, this soil is not really going to have any perlite in it or like any kind of drainage whatsoever because it's going in the ground. So what I like to do is use this to top my garden beds off or my plants in the flowering stage. These peppers have been blooming like crazy shooting peppers out so we've been topping with compost and nutrients fresh soil i'm just going to put a bunch of soil around her base right here and then we're going to go around and top off all my other flowering plants my other pepper my other pepper that's shooting peppers out like crazy you can see we're getting nice production here we got carrots growing and this tote peas getting big in there and then I wanted to show you this cute little pea we got guys these are Alaskan peas so check it out because I've been topping off with my compost mixture and my nutrients see that she's been really liking it and this is exactly why I topped off about a week ago when she started when I first started seeing these blooms is when you want to top off with your compost mixture a fresh compost soil or a rich organic material something you got you know you can buy it at the store you can make it yourself like we do here in my compost bin but this isn't ready yet we're gonna sift this out my husband's got to get his lazy ass up and um, <laughs> sift this out for me so we're gonna sift all this compost out and make sure it's really nice and and soft like regular soil get all these chunks out of there we're gonna store it in a bin and I'm gonna show you guys how to add to your compost with that but as far as topping off your plants that are flowering and producing out little pea plants like that you know you can see this lettuce I'll show you this lettuce really quick we transplanted this from inside so this was in my container and this is the lettuce we thinned out so check it out guys because we transplanted because we picked them out really gently um, and we transplanted them out here, gave them a good water for the first few days. You can see that we have a bunch of lettuce here that made it. And we topped off with that fresh compost, and that's why they're acting like this. It's why they're taking off and producing, you know, peas for us and starting to grow. Everything's starting to look really good here in the garden. We got a bunch of peas here, which we topped off. Just want to show you what that does, you know, topping off your garden with fresh fresh stuff here I just seen a big bean look at this we're gonna get tons of beans all at once guys they produce tons of flowers look how pretty this is such a big bean we got a lot more back here <laughs> so she's producing like crazy we topped off with fresh compost we put some radishes in the front here too which will get big and we'll be able to pull those pretty young and they'll be nice and sweet and tender now when you're topping off with in your beds and you're using like a garden soil like that you don't need to as far as I'm concerned it like what I do I don't put perlite in it if I'm using this straight to go in my beds now if I'm mixing up a mixture for my pots like to plant in containers like I have here 
I'm gonna make sure you have good drainage. We got a little crushed, but that's okay. I recycle all my containers. This is what my blueberry and blackberry came in. So that's how small they were in that size pot. My blueberry and blackberry. You can see just how small this pot is. They needed a big pot. So that's like the first thing you want to do when you take your plants home, guys, is transplant. And I'm sorry if this video quality isn't that good. I just want to be able to do some things for you guys while I'm getting my camera figured out. So the way I mix this soil now, I have a cup of perlite in here in a, just a bin like this. It's like a little foot washing bin. Now I put half of my organics mixture, which is this little guy, my raised bed mix. This doesn't, like I said, it has organic material in it. And you can see that little, the little organic material. Um, but it doesn't have perlite. It has wood chips, it has sphagnum moss, it has dolomite lime, it has great stuff in it, but it doesn't have perlite. So I used half of that and half of my succulent garden soil because I'm going to make a succulent potting mix. So I used half and half and then I'm going to use, um, garden soil is really thick so I have to use a lot of perlite. So I'm going to show you guys keep an eye out for that video on my succulent mixture but if it's for veggies and stuff like that I put half of this garden soil in this tote and I did use some of this just because it looks pretty good the soil you know it, it's got a lot of organic rich material in it it looks real dark it's got fertilizer so why not add it in there in my pots it can't hurt so I put just a couple of scoops of that in with my organics and then I put a cup of perlite, just a styrofoam cup of perlite. And you can see how well this is. Now when I get my camera set up, I will definitely mix this up for you guys and show you. I just want to show you that, you know, it's really easy to find soil and use it. You don't have to worry about being too particular as long as it's really high, rich in organic material like this. Guess how much this bag was compared to my Coca Loco. My Coca Loco is $18. Same size bag. This is $7.98 or $9 yesterday. It was either $8 or $9. So it works really good, guys. It's organic, which I love. I love to garden all organic if I can. So you just want to fill your pot up. We'll do a pot here for you if you like. You just want to fill your pot. Get it in there. This is so hard to do. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is for like lettuce. We'll plant some lettuce in here, guys. Just want to show you this awesome soil. I love this soil. I fed just found it yesterday, so I'm kind of curious how my plants are gonna do in it. And that's why I'm showing you guys, you know, it's cheap. Why not? Cheaper the better, right? So once you get your soil mixed in, you want like a nice good airy mixture. You want it to be this is straight organic mixture. That's straight that soil. And I'm not going to add anything in here for my lettuce. Now, I should add some perlite because there's none in here. And I really like perlite in my area because we have a lot of moisture in the air and it tends to rot out our plants. So since I didn't put that in there, <laughs> what I'm going to do is just plant some of my seeds. Now, I don't want to plant a lot of lettuce because I have tons of lettuce already. But you just want to sprinkle your seeds down. Just gently. If it's lettuce, you don't gotta worry about spacing too much. You're gonna um you're gonna thin them out when they get a little bigger. So they can have their own space, their own room to grow. And then what you wanna do guys, after you sow your seeds and you get that good potting soil in there, is just put a layer of that soil gently on top, especially for really small seeds. The smaller the seed, the higher it should be on the soil line. So the less further down you gotta plant it, the smaller the seed is. And you just wanna put a good layer like that, guys. Spread it out, tap them down, give it a good water with like a stream spout so you don't move around your seeds. Keep it well, well moisture, this soil. Keep it well watered for like the first week. It can take up to a week to sometimes, you know, 10 days for these radish and lettuce to sprout. So I'm going to get another tote ready like this and plant my radishes in it. We're going to plant some radish in this container right here. And I just want to show you guys what planting radish, you know, just choose a good potting soil, you know, test it out. That's why I'm showing you guys different potting soils. So you, you kind of know what this looks like, at least what I buy. 
And then um, when you're planting radishes or something like that, you only want to put maybe one, two, three, four, five, like six radish in a pot this size. I'm not really sure. It's a gallon. So this is a gallon pot. So we're going to put like five radish in here and they're going to grow. They're going to get big. They don't need much of a, a, a pot size because they're really tiny with their roots and they push out a, um, their fruit and vegetable on the end uh, right underneath this soil line. So we'll be able to pull them radishes out of there. It's really nice airy soil so it can breathe and have some room to grow. You don't want to plant too much radish in your containers. You know, you want to go by the container size. So I can only plant about five radish in here. In something like this, you can plant, as long as they're like two, three inches apart, you're good. You can also double plant them. So there can be two radishes in one spot. And you don't have to worry. They will grow. They will produce. They'll kind of push each other out of the way. If there's any more than two, I usually pluck the other ones out. But as far as that's concerned, guys, you can go your herbs, veggies, a lot of things in containers. Till next time guys, I hope that helped you to choose a good potting soil. I just wanted to show you guys basically what I went to the store and got yesterday. We're getting ready to, you know, do more videos for you guys. I gotta transplant my orchid. We're gonna do my bromeliad. We're gonna make succulent arrangements. So we got a lot going on. We're gonna sow some more seeds. Please stay tuned if you'd like to see more to come. I hope this helps you to choose a nice good potting soil. Now when, when it says garden soil, that just means that it's going to be really heavier than potting soil. So if you don't want to go through the trouble and mix up your soil, your own mix like I do, just get something that says potting soil on it if it's for the pots. If it's for raised beds, you can definitely just buy this. This is perfectly fine. I actually really enjoy this mix and I'm going to top off the rest of my garden beds with it. And see you guys soon. Get rocking out here. Get the garden finished up for the winter here and fall. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great day. Bye bye.